very excited to see what you have been doing during your senior ex uh, uh, process here. Um, and we've all been instructed that this uh, presentation will last between 15 and 20 minutes. We'll let you know when you are at 15 minutes and you have five minutes left. Um, we'll be thinking about some questions we might be excited to ask you about afterwards. Um, and we're all really just excited to hear what you have to, to say and to listen to what you've been doing. Um, we do have Ms. Feynman here as well as a teacher. We have a couple of junior panelists and we have Barbara Neely um, from Connors Emerson here and we have Betty Breyer as well in the community. Um, so whenever you're ready, um, I think we will be ready to start. Okay, um, I'm Elsa. Um, for my senior ex, I wanted to do something that would uh, pertain to my future and uh, um, possibly lead to uh, more, you know, keep it more career oriented. Um, so that's, um, so I wanted to take an EMT course and w along with that work um, or do um, some kind of um, work with the Bar Harbor Fire Department to get a, really get a feel for what it's like. Um, a lot of people, including myself, thought I was going to go into the equestrian uh, career path and then I was really I was really into that and that's what I was uh, looking to do up until my junior year and then but I really wanted to stay around here and it's hard to make a living um, and be real successful in the horse industry. Um, so these are my two horses. Um, I only have the big blonde one now, but uh, yeah, uh, it's real hard, and so I, I needed something that would uh, kind of give me a base, and um, and then I could maybe keep uh, keep the horse stuff as my uh, hobby. And then there was another thing someone said to me once is that you don't. Um, she wished she hadn't made uh, what she really loves her job. She wished, um, cause she then she was like, oh my god, I gotta get up every morning and feed the horses and it wasn't something she loved anymore. It was just, it was her job. Um, so um, the EMT firefighters kind of role is an active, hands-on, um, not, I could, don't think I could go and sit in a cubicle all day uh, and do paperwork, look at spreadsheets and stuff. There is paperwork, but uh, just a little bit in comparison for what all the hands-on stuff that you're doing. Um, so my goals for the Senior X was to make to make um, something I might or do something I might want to do in the future and see if this is something I want to do. So that I wouldn't want to invest a lot of money in going to school and go for a semester and realize I don't like it. Um, so this is a great way to um, kind of get your feet wet. Um, and yeah, I want to just see if I like it because I might not even like it and I don't want to invest the money in it. Um, so which is how I came to my essential question, how can um, taking an EMT course and working with the Bar Harbor Fire Department help me in making a career choice? Uh, so uh, my prior knowledge, uh, this pretty much sums it up. I originally had a blank slide, but then I was like, I need to put something on there because if I think the words are just not working or something. So um, yeah, I, I, um, I haven't watched season 10, but I'm pretty up to date on all my Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> um, so, my mentor is John Sanders. We're supposed to have a picture of like our mentor, but I wouldn't want my face like I, I, I wouldn't want my face on a projector. So I was like, helmet's good enough. So um, he's a captain at the Bar Harbor Fire Department. It's like um, kind of just in charge of that shift or like the leader position for the shift. And he's a paramedic. Uh, that's the highest um, an EMT um, role that you can that you can get. Um, and then. Uh, Sorry, John, you don't get all the credit. Like, everyone was a mentor, kind of. Because um, there's, there's like, and then the, he's everyone who works there. And then the last two are, were my EMT instructors, um, who I did work with Sean a bit, because um, he does per diem at Bar, in Bar Harbor. So I worked a little bit with him. Um, so then for the EMT course, I went every uh, Thursday. And it was, all, it was an all-day course. It was in Somesville, and so we would, Generally, um, start out with a, a quiz, and then we had a lecture, and then I think oh no, nope. we had a lecture, and it was uh, we did a few Saturdays. It was a 140-hour course, but we had to cram it into 113 hours, so we missed a bit of stuff, but uh, no biggie. And then we had to do 16 clinical hours, and that's um, because not everyone's doing or uh, going with a fire department on their own. They, it's just a you know, actually, it's one thing to read about it, read and 
read about the skills, but it's another to do, actually go out and do it. So you, you, for this, you would go either to a ho you went to a hospital and you worked on an ambulance. Um, you kind of split it up, and you, it was just the the way to get there. It was a way to you know just practice your skills and make sure you really got them down and you can do it because it's in a real life scenario. So the course, um, it had a lot of, there's a lot of it, and it's mostly to prepare you for the licensing test, which is the national registry. Um, we had the introduction, switch stuff, which is like wear your gloves, wear your masks, um, and then there was uh, anatomy, airway, respiratory, and cardiac stuff were a big, were the big section of the course, because that's mostly what we, uh, what you see out there. You don't see too many, uh, oh, too many, too many OB things. Um, pediatrics, not as much, but you know, it depends on the area of work you work in. Um, so this is the day we got our shirts. We're all excited to hear about to go do clinicals next week. Um, so we would take a quiz, and then we would have a lecture for like four hours, and then we would take an hour for lunch, and we come back and do another lecture. And then we would have our hands on where we had like, they had these big Tupperware buckets of stuff. Like it was like an ambulance in a big Tupperware buckets. <laughs> and we would just practice all the skills and stuff. Um, so the, this test, um, to get licensed and to be an EMT, you have to take the national registry. Um, there's a practical portion, which is like, can you actually do the skills? And can you handle a patient and be a competent EMT? And then there's the written part, which is a computer computer thing. Um, it's like the MEA's kind of thing, the computer one. I think that's it. Um, and you have 70 to 120 questions, depending. It's scaled. It's they, there's like these formulas, and it, it's a it's you know it hurts your head to think about it. And then for Maine to get your license, you have to get a 75. Um, but if you want to get registry, like where you could work in all the states. It's, it's higher, I don't know what it is, but. Um, so the real reason, or the, I really wanted to work with Bar Harbor, in Bar Harbor with the fire department because I didn't feel like, um, or, well afterwards, after completing the course, I didn't feel like 16 hours was enough to really, to really understand it. And I feel like now I've got, I really got a head start from the other, other people in my class. And uh, yeah, so. Um, in Bar Harbor, a majority of the calls are EMS. Um, they're mostly non-eventful. In 2014, there was just around, just over a uh, thousand calls. Uh, and, and this is the back of rescue one. Um, over here is like um, bandaging and uh, bleeding control and stuff. Um, some pillows and stuff above there. Um, up and to the right is like uh, airway or uh, IVs and stuff. So as a basic BMT, uh, I pretty much won't touch that cupboard. Uh, below that is the monitor, and that that does a whole bunch of stuff. A whole bunch of stuff. It can. It's uh, AED. It takes vitals, blood pressure, um, pulse ox, uh, uh, heart rate. It, it's an AED. It can. Oh, and it can uh, interpret EKGs and stuff. So it, it does a bunch of stuff. Um, and then up over here at the top shelf is airway stuff. So um, you have two different kind of airway junks or adjuncts. Um, there's a nasal, which it, you just, it just goes down like your throat. And then there's an um, oral one, which is where you would use for an unconscious patient. And um, the, these just keep the airway open so you don't, um, so, um, if you're, if you have, like, if you see Meredith, you know, holding the bag and do like this one, but on Grey's Anatomy, you know, that would just keep the um, airway open, um, so that the, um, so air can just get into the lungs and everything. Um, below that, there's a little suction machine. If a patient is vomiting, you would suction everything out because you don't want them to aspirate on, on anything, and you don't want it to go in the lungs because that just causes a whole bunch more problems. Uh, below that, uh, the line is not too great, but there's uh, a whole control panel that's like heat and everything, heat, AC. Um, there's an oxygen thing where you hook up the oxygen, and it's, there's a main, a main tank. So th there's like a main system. So there's like, I think there's like three different ones in there. Um, and then there's like a little seat that swivels, it turns around, so you can face forward.
carry on. Uh, for the fire side of it, um, most of them were fire alarms where uh, they were someone was just uh, building and the dust got in the system. You know, someone just tripped an alarm. Um, there is sometimes car accidents, uh, and then when life light comes, uh, you, the fire department has to go down to the ball field at the Y and secure the landing zone and make sure no one's running in and playing hopscotch or whatever in the field. Um, and then they need, they can't, they can't just wheel the patient down Main Street, they have to go in an ambulance, so um, Rescue One goes and picks up the life flight crew and all their, all their equipment, takes them to the hospital, hooks them up to the equipment, and then takes them back to the helicopter, and then off they go. Um, there's a little over 500 calls for 2014. Um, so, uh, and that, that's the helicopter. Um, it, it's really tight. Like, if you, if you're, if, when you're in the back of an ambulance, like, you think that's tight, then just, just go in the helicopter, like, you can't do anything. Um, for, I did about 50 EMS calls, about 14, um, fire calls, and then, uh, I don't know, I, I stopped keeping track of the hours last week, but it was, it's a little over 400. 400 as of last week. Um, so the biggest uh, problems, or the problems I had was uh, my driver's license. I didn't get my driver's license until September 29th. So uh, twice, I think twice or three times a week, um, I depended on my parents to come after Block B and take me into Bar Harbor. And then they, luckily they work in Bar Harbor so they could just pick me up and take me home after. Uh, and then there was the first time anxiety. I was really worried about being the youngest in the class and uh, yeah that was uh, that was my biggest worry and then I, I did my first class and then I went to the I had my first day at the fire department but there's three different shifts so I had three different first days so you know I had first day of this shift, first day of this shift, first day of this shift. Um, and then, so I have decided that I do like this uh, type of work, and I do want to make it um, make it my primary uh, job. So um, I've applied and been accepted to SMCC for the fire science for, for the fire science. Um, it's a two-year program, um, and I hope I want to get my advanced license. Hopefully, when in that time frame. Um, and then within that program, they have a litter program, which is where um, community fire stations from around the Portland area uh, uh, take in the, the college students. And they, the college students get to live there for free. Um, they just pay for their meals and transportation in exchange for being on call for a, for a certain amount of time each week. So it's a pretty good deal, and uh, the students get to, so instead of going to the classroom and then back to your dorm uh, and just like reading about it in the textbook, you get to actually practice those skills that you've been, uh, that you've read about and learned about in the classroom. You get to go practice them out in the real world with the fire station. Um, biggest life lessons I've learned here is um, you got to put your foot in the door. Um, no one can read your mind and uh, know what you want and then Hand it to you on a silver platter. You've got to ask for it. You've got to go. You know. You got to introduce yourself. You got to. You know. You got to go out and tell them what you want. Uh, wasn't a, it, initially that was the big, the biggest. Like I said, I was like, oh, I'll do it next week, or no, I'll, I'll go talk to them next week. You know, and it just. It, I think it was like a month long process. So I do want to go. I will be going to SMCC in the fall. I will be continuing the uh, internship with Bar Harbor. It's going to work a little differently next semester because I'm coming back. I took Compass Rose for senior English, and uh, so I could take because I had to miss a full day of school once a week to take the EMT course. So I spent most of my time over at Compass Rose, and then I would leave after the block, go to the fire station. But next semester, I'm taking some more classes like. In the mainstream school, so uh, I, I still do want to uh, go be like spend time there and stuff. Um, and I will be getting my EMT license. It's uh, I just they just rescheduled the practical part, the hands on testing, because it got canceled for January 4th, and 
So, but it's going to be February 7th, and then I can take the written test after that, and then I can send in for the license, and I will definitely be on top of that. Um, the, there's a long list of everyone, I think. There's everyone from the fire station, um, especially my mentor, who uh, agreed and signed off on everything and let me come and hang out at the fire station. Um, the two, two instructors, Sean and Jim, they uh, were really helpful. They really cared about the class, and they really put a lot of effort into it. Um, where I did my clinicals in Brewer and Maine Coast, MDI Hospital was awesome. They were, um, uh, they always made me feel welcome. They, uh, no cold shoulders, it was awesome. Uh, Ms. Dilling, because she always, she always met with me, because I didn't come to class every day, so she would meet with me on her off time. And then the um, MDI EEF, because they paid for over half my class. There's, in a nutshell. <laughs> and then there's the sources I can give everyone, you guys, the annotated packet with the... You're at 15 minutes. Sweet. Perfect. Wonderful. Good. Good. On behalf of the audience, Elsa, you did a fabulous presentation, and I'm very happy to have heard that and see your experiences. Um, I'd like to open up questioning to the panelists who are here today. Um, any questions? We'll start with Ms. Breyer and, and then Ms. Neely, um, junior panelists, and then Ms. Simon cool. and myself. Do you have any questions, Ms. Uh, I thought I did. Now I'm looking, and I can't see what I wrote down. <laughs> um, I thought you did a great job. Thank you. I think that you uh, filled all the criteria that was here. Um, it was interesting when you started out, you know, about the love of your horses and so forth and so on, and then, you know, what changed your mind in having a job, which is very, very important. And um, so, is it the fire part of all of this that is the most interest to you, of being an EMT? I mean, there's a lot about, a lot of things that cover that, but... Uh, yeah, most, I think the fire part ends up being more interesting to people because s they do so many EMS calls that um, they, you know, you don't do too many fire calls. So mm -hmm. those are, end up being the more favored type of call. So when um, the emergency truck went, you went on some of these, mm -hmm. number of these calls. Right? Oh, yeah. Right. Were you just there to, were you there to help or did you participate or how did you what did you do? Or did you just watch? Um, it was mostly just watching. Watch. Um, occasionally I could do like turn this switch on and mm -hmm. um, okay. hand you this piece right. of equipment. Okay. Oh, I enjoyed it. Thank yeah. you. Um, then we'll have Ms. Neely. Hey, also. Hey. Um, so you mentioned being the youngest in the course. Is was there an age? Um, requirement that you had to be there wasn't um, they um, one of the instructors told me that they were really hesitant to have there was yeah. to have me and there was another there was a, Matt Wolfbach did he took a, the one in Bangor they were really hesitant to have the underage people um, but there wasn't you just had to take this um, like the reading portion of the acuplacer and I did fine with that, so there really wasn't a reason they couldn't. Um, but yeah, I was the youngest one. I think it was mo there was a couple like park rangers, uh, some ambulance drivers for Northeast Harbor. They Northeast hires um, just ambulance drivers, and then they'll have so they can. It kind of works out. It's like a community thing, and so they had two of those, and uh, yeah, there was there's a bunch of people. It was all spread out. There was so many. Did you look at any other schools besides Southern Maine? Um, Eastern Maine has almost the same program, uh, but it's it's not it's a lot smaller. So if you want to really get the experience, you it's probably better to go to Southern Maine, or that's what I would really want to do if I'm going to do that. And I think um, University of Southern Maine has a fire science program, but I, I don't think it's very developed, or I could not couldn't find much on it. So what's the next step when you say you're going for your advanced licenses? Is that the paramedic stage? Or um, there's there's three licenses. There's okay. a basic, um, advanced, intermediate. It's kind of interchangeable. And there's paramedic. Um, so when I'm down in Southern Maine, I, 
I would like to get the advance. I'm kind of on the fence about paramedicum. Not not too sure. Great. Thanks. Junior panelists, do you have any questions? Yeah. Uh, at any point, did you uh, kind of not really like want to continue with this? Did you kind of have second thoughts about your decision? Not really. No, not really. Once I. No, not really. Um, <laughs> it, it's kind of slow in the uh, in the winter months, so it, they're kind of long days, and you know, just doing your thumbs, you know. But no, not really. <laughs> fell out of their chair or like oh fell on the floor and they just need help backing the bed or okay. um just just a boost up or um sometimes you would take um someone from the hospital who is um uh who's in the hospital back to their ner the nursing home or something or back to their house okay great um and then i have two other questions that are yeah. school science related did you were you always did you always enjoy science your science courses uh yeah mostly um yeah. Uh, chemistry is what I really enjoyed chemistry. That was by far my favorite. Okay. My favorite academic course. And then did you, I know we have an anatomy course here in the school. Yeah, I'm taking that. You're taking that. Yeah. So that must be, you must have some good prior knowledge going into that course. Though. Are you taking yeah. this coming semester? Yeah, I'm taking it. Oh, nice. So that's good. That, those were my questions. Thanks. Well, it was good that you had CPR certification before you started this. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Um, my question is, given this scenario, would you do this again? Would you do this as your senior ex again? Oh, yeah. Um, I, Great. If you, um, if uh, being in school and something or something is not your, uh, really your cup of tea, and MDI has an internship credit, so I got a credit for leaving one block. Mm -hmm. If you, you can do that and go do something that you like or you want to do, then why wouldn't you? So that, I mean, I I didn't want to take an elective that, you know, I'm not really going to care about or that's, that I'm not going to put too much effort into. But so yeah, if you can get out of school and do something you want to do, then go do that. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thanks. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Elsa. Thank you.